بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الشهر ولا إله إلا الله وعشر من محمد النبي ورسوله ما بعد. You're watching and listening to Islam Tomorrow broadcasting live today all the way from Sid Knee, Sid's Knee, Australia. This is your host Yusuf S, the National Muslim Chaplain from Washington D.C. here on special assignment, and I have my good friend with me. This is Horaira. Gata. You know Gata? Cat. This is cat. This is a cool cat. Actually, it's kind of warm. Anyway, I want to talk about some aspect of Islam that a lot of people forget about. And my friend Gata, he remind me of this subject tonight. Islam, which as all of you know, means peace and submission to Allah. This is what it means. But it carries important connotations for us, concepts, an overall understanding. What is the understanding of Islam? So when Islam comes, it brings two important ingredients. What are the ingredients? The first one is haq. What is haq? In Arabic, rights. This is the rights that everybody has. Everybody gets rights uh, from Islam. Haqq illallah. That's the first one, which means Allah's right that you cannot worship anybody except Him, and you cannot worship anybody with Him. This is the first haqq in Islam, number one. The second haqq or rights in Islam is Muhammad or Rasulullah. It means when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells you something has a meaning in Quran, you accept it. When he shows you the way, then you accept this way. So he has the right. What's the next right? The next right after Allah or Rasulullah is the haq of your ummi, your mama. Because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked the question, who, after Allah and His Messenger, has the most haq on me? Who has the most rights after Almighty God and you? Meaning the Prophet You know what he said? Your mama. They said, and then who? He said, your mother. He said, and then who? Your mother and then your father. So we see this is how the order of the haq comes. We learn from this hadith, number one is Allah, number two is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then your parents. Very important is the haq or the rights of the parents. And this is important for us to know in the Quran when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us the order of rights, and he mentions it more than one time by the way. He talks about it in the Quran. First is to worship Allah without any partners, to obey the Rasul, ati Allah wa ati Rasul. But then he mentions about your family, the rights to your parents, and don't kill your children. Don't kill your children because you're afraid they're going to compete with you for the food or something like this. Yes? And then he orders you not to take the life of an innocent person. That's the order that it comes in. Now look, it means everybody has rights. You can't kill people in Islam. You can't do that. No innocent person can be killed. Allah said it in the Quran, yes? But guess what? I'm a student also of the Bible, Kitab al Maqdis, for 48 years, and I know it's the same exact order in the Bible. It is. If you look in the Bible, they don't really have the Bible anymore, they have translations only. But if you look, chapter 20, book of Exodus. Or the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, you go and you look, guess what it says? The same thing. First, you cannot have any partners with the Allah. This is what it says. Second, no senum, no statues, no idols. Third, Allah's names. You can't use Allah's names in a bad way. Okay. Fourth, you have to remember the Sabbath. Sabbath. The Saturday, you can't work. You have to keep it like honorable or holy for Allah. Like Juma is for us, except we only have one hour, they have the whole 24. <laughs> but anyway, then your parents. 
the same as Islam. Then, after Allah's rights, the parents' rights. Now, I've only been talking about one. I said there were two things. Did I say two? I've only been talking about haq. What's the other one? Do you know? It's called the balance. Al-Mizan means a balance between two things. Haq on one side, but a lot of times we don't hear about the other side. What's the other side? Limits. There are limits. Everything that has rights has limits. The only one with no limit to it is la ilaha illallah. This one, there's no limit. Everything else has limits. Because your parents have rights. Hmm? Read Surah to Luqman, chapter 31, and see what Luqman tells his son. What he tells his son? La ilaha illallah, only worship Allah, don't make any partners with Allah. Hmm? Then it says about obeying your parents in everything, illa except, except if they tell you to worship other than Allah. Right? So that's a limit, right? You see it? And so after Allah and His Messenger, that's when the limits come. Everything has limits after that. You have rights, but you have limits. Your wife has rights, but she has limits. If you read in Surah An-Nisa as an example, that's the chapter about women. In verse 34, it starts out, Rajulin, which means men or males, have the responsibility to provide for the women on Nisa. All of the men have the responsibility to take care of all of the women. We have to care for our daughters, our sisters, our wives, and our mothers. We have to. It's not optional. So at the same time, though, she also has limits. Look what the rest of the surah says, that the men are responsible to provide for them and be, give security for them. And because they do this, the women have to be obedient. That's what Allah said. And the meaning from the tafsir that I read, it says they have to be obedient to Allah and then to their husbands. Why? Because how could they obey their husband if he told them to do something not in Islam, right? So this also answers the question right away, because some people have asked us, how come a Muslim woman cannot marry a Christian man or a Jewish man? Well, because she has to obey her husband, right? What's going to happen? He's going to say, don't pray, don't fast, don't pay zakat, don't do hajj, and don't raise the children as Muslims. And if he said that, this is against Islam. She would have a horrible life, or the children would go out of Islam, and it would be a big problem. Right? So we understand. And Allah said, believers marry believers. Believers marry who? Believers. Even when Allah gives permission for the men to marry from the Ahl Kitab, He has limits. Mm hmm, limits. He didn't say, oh, anybody who wears a cross, you can get married to them. He didn't say that. He didn't say, anybody who said, I'm a Christian, you can marry them. He didn't say that. He said, from the Ahl Kitab, they have to be believers. This has condition. And number two, they have to be a virgin. <laughs> In Australia? <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget about it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I've been trying to learn the last couple of weeks some of the expressions in the way the people speak in Australia. And I didn't get it together yet, I'm working on it. I'm still learning what, how to speak in New York. When I'm in New York, when they want to say, just leave it. They say, forget about it. It's like one word, forget about it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So believers marry believers. 
And if a woman said, oh, I'm a Christian, and I want to get married to this guy, or the guy tells me, oh, I'm a Muslim, I want to get married to this girl, and she's a, you know, Ahl Kitab, Christian. And so I take her into the office, we sit down, we're going to talk, and I'm going to ask her, what do you believe? She said, what do you mean? What do you believe? Oh, I believe there's a God. Well, that's good. That's nice. What else? I don't know. You don't have anything? Oh, yeah. Jesus died for my sins. That's it? That's all you know? Yeah. Is that really a believer? Is it? Let's ask a question. Can you please tell me something about the Bible? She said, like what? Well, can you tell me about the Old Testament? No. Can you tell me about the New Testament? Hmm, no. Have you ever read the Old Testament? No. Have you read the New Testament? Hmm, no. Have you heard about something called the Ten Commandments? Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Okay, could you tell me what they are? Hmm. One of them is, thou shalt not kill. What else? Uh, I think thou shalt not eat pork or something. I don't know. It's old Jewish anyway. It doesn't matter for us. We're Christian. Oh, okay. So, do you know something about the New Testament? Yeah. Jesus died for my sins. That's it. Okay, is that really somebody you, I mean, I'll be honest. You want to really say this is a believer? Huh? And so many times the young brother comes to me, oh man, she's a believer. She's almost like a Muslim. I mean, you know, she believes there's a God and he's one and, you know, really? Huh? And she's Ahl Kitab. So I ask her, do you even own a Bible? No. And you never read one? No. Are you interested in it? No. And I tell him, okay, this is actually a whole checkbook. <laughs> be careful. Take it easy. So there has to be limits, otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. Right? And how many times after a lecture or a program like this, when I'm going out the door, somebody comes to me, I need to talk to you privately. I gotta to talk to you privately. I wanna say something to you, please. And then we stop and I'll go over to the side. You know what he says? Okay, see, my wife, she's not a Muslim. And I said, I don't wanna hear the rest of it. I've heard the story over and over and over and over. And what happens? Oh, ever since I got married, it's blah, 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 it's a problem. She doesn't want me to pray. She doesn't like this. She says this about my religion. She's against the Quran. She gives me a hard time. Wallahi. And I said, do you have any children? No. Alhamdulillah. Go. Because if he has a child with this lady, what will happen? Will the problem get better or worse? A lot worse? Yeah. And then some come to me and they already have children and they say, what can I do? She wants them to be Christian. They're wearing the cross and they're saying all this stuff and they go to church. She won't let them go to the masjid with me. Or she says, no, I don't want them to have any religion at all till they get older, let them decide for themselves. Now there's an idea. Have you ever heard anybody say that? You never heard it? I heard this actually some years ago. A woman told me, I want my children to grow up with no religion whatsoever and just let them choose for themselves. I said, you know what's wrong with that? I was a Christian, yeah, I told her, you know what's wrong with that idea? She said, what? I said, just because you don't teach them any religion doesn't mean that shaitan is gonna take off and wait until they get... <laughs> Stupid, man. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Rights and limits rights and limits. That's why a lot of times we get in trouble trying to explain our religion to non-Muslims because we didn't tell them about rights and limits. We only want to talk about rights. Women's rights. Women have to have rights. Of course they do. You think Allah didn't know that? 
Who created women? Did you? No. Did Adam? No. Allah. This is One. Is it? Now, I went slow enough, and if you know Arabic, it's clear. He said, Oh, mankind. This means who? Everybody. Yes? Everybody, not just Muslims, movement, everybody. Fear your Lord, who created you all. All of us were created from who? One single. Who is? Alayhi salam. And from him, Hawa, Eve. And from these two, everybody came from them. Right? So Allah knows what he created. Yes? So it's not for you or me to say what women's rights are. It's not for you to say even what your rights are. Allah tells you what your rights are, right? And what your limits are, right? So how come if I don't get to say what my rights are, I have to take it from Allah. As a Muslim, I have to take it from Allah. So the same is true for the women. They cannot make up their rights. And I can't make up mine. Otherwise, they're making up their deen. And if you make up your deen, Allah said in the Quran, in the deen, in the lahil, Islam. Islam. So if we understood that, Allah is not going to accept anything in, as a deen, a way of life, except what he told you to do. Right? So women cannot tell anybody what their rights are unless they base it on what Allah said, and I can't either. And we're not going to play that game. And when they say equal rights, there's no such thing. You, there is no such thing. I know I, when I say this in my country, people go, oh, what a chauvinist. No, I'm a chauvinist. The opposite is true. I love women. I do. I think they're neat. They're pretty. They're soft. They're lots of fun. Huh? And by the way, I know the difference between a boy and a girl. I do. I have five children and many grandchildren, alhamdulillah, I know the difference. And guess what? Boys are not girls and girls are not boys. Meaning, they're not equal. Duh. <laughs> now, if you didn't know that, we can sign you up for a course in biology and they'll teach you. <laughs> they call it the birds and the bees and you'll find out they're not equal. And stop saying women and men are equal. But Islam gives you something better than equal rights. And I've asked, because a lot of times the Muslim women in my country, they start talking crazy, you know. They start saying this and this. And I go to them and I say, okay, let's sit down and let's talk. I want to know because I need to learn. Do you want equal rights? Yes, we need to have equal rights. I said, okay. This, you want to change what Allah ordered? They say, what do you mean? I said, okay, let's go real slow. Do Muslims have to pray? Yes. I said, how many times? Five times a day. I said, really? Men have to pray five times a day, every day for the rest of their life. Yes? Yeah. How about women? Huh? Do you? And right away they go, yeah. I said, every day of every month? <laughs> Oh, well, no. I said, you want to change that? You want to start praying every single day? Well, no, we can't because, I said, you don't have to explain it. Allah already took care of that. Okay? I'm just asking you, you want to change what Allah gave you? Allah gives what they call in uh, Lagu Arabiya, it's called ruksa. 
Ruksa. What is Ruksa? Concession. Concession. Permission. I heard one brother say license. It's also good. All of this means it is something nice for you. I'm a traveler, Musafir. As Musafir, do I have to pray my four uh, for Dohar and Asr and Isha? No. No. And I can pray together Dohar and Asr and Maghrib and Isha. Yes? Why? Allah make it easy. It's called Qasr wa Jama. Yes? It's nice. When you travel because you're moving things, as people said, oh, well, it's easy to travel these days. Huh, travel with me and find out. <laughs> it's nice because I can just pray over here, put everything together. Then I go down the road, I relax. And it gives me time to think, okay, I can't pray here, so I'll wait till I get over there. That'll work. I can do this. I can do this. You know, it's nice. For the woman, she has ruksa for her salah. What about during Ramadan? What about Ramadan? Does she have to fast every day? Yeah. Every day. Yeah. All month? Well, not really because she, well, she has some days to make up. Okay, who set that up? The Creator. Not me. Not Muhammad Sallallahu Who made it up? Allah. This is His will. This is what He has ordered. This is His preordination. What's right? You want to change it? So women don't have equal rights and men don't have equal rights. What we have is better. What's better? It's called equity. Equity gives you the fair amount you're supposed to get. If I'm a partner and you're a partner and you're a partner and a partner and a partner in a business, but each one of us put in a different amount, then we should only get the balance, the percentage, which is our equity. If I put a small part, you put a big part. So when the money comes, do I get the same as you? That wouldn't be fair. I'd say, oh, equal rights, equal rights. You said you put in one dollar, I put in one million. I got news for you. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So I want to stress this over and over about equity equity because Islam gives us rights. Rights with equity is the limitations. Does that make sense? So this makes everything easy. Now I picked on the women a little bit. I need to pick on us for a little while to make it equity. <laughs> is that fair? Yeah. Now for us, I didn't talk about hijab for the ladies because they already know about that. It's in the Quran. But what about us? They asked me, do men have to grow the beard? And I said, no, they don't. And some people said, what? Akhi, this is far. You have to grow the beard. I said, no, you don't. They said, Akhi, it's Hadith, Sahih Bukhari. It's in volume, I think volume seven, or volume, it's volume six, in Hadith number 795 or 94. Uh, I forgot, but we can find it real easy. And it says that the Rasul Sallallahu said for us and ordered, it's like an order. He said to what? The lehya. Huh? Leave it and cut this. Cut the off the so you don't have it hanging over. Right? This is what he said. So who is Yusuf to come along now and say, no, you don't have to grow it? Well, I'm speaking English. I'm speaking English, and in English, if I say you grow it, it means that you're doing something physically to make it happen, and you can't. It's impossible. You can't grow it. Allah is the one making it grow. But you have to stop cutting it off. <laughs> ah. And that's called putting everything in perspective. Because what we need to have is a balance. If we don't balance our Islam, we're going to be in trouble. What about clothes? Do men have to wear, like I have, like this? Do they have to wear this ghutra? Do you have to wear this cap? Do I have to wear this uh, thobe? You call it thobe? Do I have to wear this? 
No. I can take this off. I can take this off. I don't want to take this off right now. It's too cold. <laughs> but I don't need this to be a Muslim, do I? No. I don't need it. But I need to be covered up properly. What is the minimum? Minimum. And Islam tells you there's a minimum, by the way. You mustn't go beyond this. I have to keep covered up from my knee to this small hole. Huh? Called what? We call it belly button. I don't know what they call it in Australia. I'm afraid to guess. But somewhere between here, and all has to be is aura. Aura has to be covered. Right? Yeah. Now, in the books of fiqh, explaining the understanding of the salah, when you make salah, you must also cover the top too. If you have some way to cover the top, you need to cover up your chest and everything while you make salah. That's what I read. So now we have an understanding of the minimum. But what about women? Let's go back to women again. Did you know that I was surprised when I read this, the woman has exactly the same rule. She has to be covered from here to here all the time. And I went, um, I gotta go find the sheikh. I gotta ask a question. Well, I asked the sheikh, I said, okay, I read in this book, a woman has to be covered from here to here. He said, that's right. I said, what about, you know, uh, the rest? He said, she doesn't have to cover that. I said, oh, the He said, no, 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 no. He said, in the privacy of her home, around her own family, her own children, she can feed her baby, and it's no problem. There's no problem to feed her baby in front of her husband, or another baby, or her sister, or people like this. It's not a problem. She can do that. I said, oh. He said, but as soon as a strange man comes around, then Allah has explained to her she has to cover up. And now you understand the covering. And it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah An-Nur and in Surah Al-Hasab. And it tells them how to cover. But if a woman says to me, do I have to wear a hijab? I say, no, you don't. As long as you stay home. <laughs> it's no problem. So if you want to play the game of equity and equality, you start learning in Islam how it works. Everything has a reason, though. But we don't know all the reasons. Why can't we eat pork? Why not? It's soft. And it's kind of light colored. And some people like to eat it. Why not? Allah said, don't eat it. Yeah, but why? When people say, yeah, but why, it indicates two things. One, they like to play around. And the second one is, they are weak in their iman. Because when iman is really, really strong, nobody says why. And let me explain something, a, a word in Arabic, it's called yakin. Everybody know what's a yakin? Yakin, I want to explain an example though. Somebody could tell you, don't touch this, it's hot. And you go, okay. You believe him, don't you? You believe him, he said, don't touch it, it's hot. Okay? But Yakin is when you go over and say, is it really hot? Oh my God, yes, it's hot. Whoa! Now you have Yakin. <laughs> There's no doubt in your mind anymore, right? So, as you go through your life, sometimes things happen to you and you have no doubt anymore about anything. You're, it's real clear to you. And if you know, if I do so and so, I'm going to lose my job, and I really don't want to lose my job, you're not going to play around. Your boss says, you'll be here tomorrow at 10 minutes early, 10 minutes to 8, you'll be here early. You don't go, why? You go, yes, sir. And whenever he comes, you're there a half hour early. Why? Because you have yakin in the fact that if I'm not on time, I'm going to lose my job, man. Right? If we will give this much credit, this much hawk rights 
to the job, why wouldn't we give that to the dean? Does it make sense? Now let me ask you a question. Anybody in this room, and I know we have some people in here that could use some money right now, but we have some people in this room, they're wealthy, some doctors, some people have businesses, they don't need any money. But I want the person to tell me who does not want $10,000 cash money, American cash that you can convert for more Australian, how about that? But you can have $10,000 tomorrow morning. All you have to do is just walk in that door and stand right there at Fodger time and pray Fodger and you get $10,000. Who would say, no, I don't need it? Anybody? No. No. Everybody here would take the 10000 Amazing. Now, will you give the dean the hawk that you just gave the dollar? Will you give the dean the hawk that you just gave the dollar? Because nobody said no to my offer for 10 grand. Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rakatain al-fajr khayrum min dunya wa ma fiha. He told us the two rakahs of fajr is better for you than this entire universe and everything in it. And the scholar said that could mean double. Twice the universe. And that's a whole lot more than $10,000. Now, the question is, will you give the hawk to the dean that you just gave to the dollar? So, every, look around the room. When you're here tomorrow, and I know you'll be here because you just said you would be. So, you look around the room and see if it's this full in Fajr tomorrow morning. And then you'll find out about Yaqeen. This is going to show you what's real Yaqeen. Because you had Yaqeen in the dollar, do you have Yaqeen in the dean? And that explains why we say, why? 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 <laughs> a little boy goes to his mom, you know, and she says, go wash your hands. Why? Because it's time to eat. Why? Because it's been a long time since we ate last time. Why? Because you need to have food in your stomach. Why? <laughs> to give you energy. Why? So you can keep bothering me. Why? <laughs> and we do that. We do that. Allah gives us a clear order in the Quran. Haram. Lahm khanzir haram. The meat of the pork, the swine, the pig is forbidden to you. Why? Because it's in the Quran. Why? <laughs> Well, it could have a disease in it. Why? <laughs> or the other is to argue. Yeah, but that was back then. They didn't have refrigerators, and now we have refrigerators, and blah, blah, blah. And we can give treatment to them. And, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and we can convert it so that the gelatin is no longer like the original thing, and so the pork is no longer pork. It becomes metabolically structured and another kind of molecule, and blah, 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 blah. Why? <laughs> You follow that? No yakin. Mafi yakin. And also, this is showing that the iman is weak, very weak. How can we correct the problem? Everybody, by the way, I didn't tell you anything tonight you didn't already know. Everything I said, you knew it. Maybe you didn't know it in English, maybe you didn't know the examples, but you already knew what I said. Everybody here knew exactly what I'm talking about in one way or another. True? Yeah. But what we really want to know is, how can I fix the problem? How can I overcome this problem? I'm going to go back to our original subject when I'm talking about Islam having haq, rights and limits, because haq really has a balance to give rights, but to make limits with it. 
In Islam, you are allowed to play and have fun, true? Yes. In Islam, you're allowed to work and make money, true? Yes. In Islam, you're allowed to get married and have a family, yes? A very religious man can get married, not in the Catholic Church. No. The real religious men are the priests and the bishops and the archbishops and the cardinals and the popes, popes, sorry. I got these new teeth, I'm still having some problem with them. And those guys cannot get married. They cannot have a wife. That means they can't have any children. That means they can't have any fun. <laughs> what are they going to do? You know what one of them told me? I just asked him one time. I asked a priest. I said, how do you deal with the fact you can't have any children? I have children. I, you know, I'm a preacher, but in my religion, Christian, not Catholic, we get married. How do you guys deal with it? No children. No grandchildren. No family. He said, we're all in the family of God. And these are all like my children, and I'm like their father. I said, these are all your children? He said, yes. I said, what a great tax write-off for the IRS. These are all my kids. <laughs> Good idea. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Some girls came to me one time. This is another subject. I was down in Florida, in Melbourne, Florida, gave a talk in the masjid. They had some visitors in Ramadan, wanted to watch Muslims break their fast. I don't know why they want to watch us break the fast. Have you ever wondered why? I think <laughs> they want to see how fast we can eat. <laughs> Sorry. Anyhow, we scared him. <laughs> so. <laughs> After the, the speech, everybody sat down to eat. They asked me, Sheikh, you want to eat or answer a question for two Christians? I said, no, I'll go talk to them. Two girls, 19 years old, both of them. And they said, we have a question. I said, OK, we'll sit down. They said, we have only one question. I said, good. Just one? Yep. Only one thing bothering you, huh? Yep. So you heard my speech and I talked about La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Quran al-Haq, Deen al-Haq, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you only have one question. So this is the only thing keeping you away from Islam? They said, hmm, yeah. I said, okay. What's the question? They said, you have a petition, a wall, between the men and the women. I said, really, that's your only problem? They said, well, yeah, that's all we want to know. I said, nothing else. You don't want to ask me how Allah is one and how he doesn't have any sons. No, we understand that. We understand. Okay, okay. So just that wall, huh? So we take down the wall, you want to be a Muslim? No answer. Well, why do you add the wall? They don't want to answer me now. <laughs> they say, whoa, this guy is fast. <laughs> I said... I'm going to come to that. You want to know about this petition. So I need to ask you, what religion are you? They said, we're Catholic. I said, oh, both of you? Yeah, Catholic. Well, that's good. I said, so I want to ask you now about the nuns. The nuns wear the hijab, right? Don't they have a covering over them? They said, we're not talking about the women's clothes. We were talking about, I said, I know what you're talking about. Okay, I speak English. <laughs> It's no problem. I'm asking you about nuns. Do they wear a covering? Yes. I said, okay. Because you know about nuns doesn't mean you know about Muslims. Who are the best of the best of your women in the Catholic Church? They said, the nuns. I said, right. And they wear a covering called a habit. They said, that's right. I said, where do they wear it? They said, we don't know. I said, when do they wear it? We don't know. When do they take it off? We don't know. I said, well, I do. Because those women keep that on from the time they get up in the morning till the time they go to bed at night, even when they live in a convent. Now, a convent means a place where no men can go, ever. 
And those women never see any men. Men never see them, but they still have to wear that habit, except when they take a bath or go to sleep. That's it. They said, well, okay, that makes sense. I said, and the best of the best of our women also wear hijab. Not all Catholics wear the habit, right? They said, yeah. I said, and not all Muslim women wear hijab. But the good ones do. The best ones do. Okay? Can the nun get married? Oh, no. I said, can she have a baby? Oh, my God, no way. How could she have a baby? She can't get married. I said, why can't they get married? She said, because oh, they're married to God. You look at their fingers. The Catholic women called nuns, when they go into it, they take the ring and they say in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and they put the, ring right, the finger right there. And that's a Christian practice to put that ring there. And by the way, if any of you have the ring there, you need to know that's not where Muslims wear it. The Sunnah was to wear it over here. And it wasn't because you got married, it was a seal to put on a letter to let people know your name. Okay? But if you like to follow the Christian way, that's what it means. That's the Holy Ghost finger. You just got Holy Ghost. <laughs> what? Anyway, I want to come back to the story. And the ladies are asking me about this, and I said, okay, you just told me that all of these nuns are married to God. Yeah, I said, they're God's wives. And you've got a problem with us having four. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And they're going, oh, never thought of that. And the one girl's looking at the other one and says, do we really believe that? <laughs> oh, they were. They started on each other. I don't know. I said, okay. I brought it up for a reason, because you see, our women, the one who are the real good ones, who wear the hijab, they can still get married. In fact, we want them to get married. In fact, we men want those women for our wives, because those are the best women to raise your children. They're great. We love the ladies with the hijab. Who wants one that wants to go naked down the street? I don't. Everybody looks at her. That's the reason I don't want her. <laughs> right? Make sense? That's cheap stuff, man. I like expensive stuff. <laughs> and expensive stuff comes in a nice, clean wrapper. Yeah. It's not thrown out on the street, is it? That's called garbage. <laughs> well, yes or no? I bet some ladies are making dua against me right now, right? <laughs> so that's sorry. To, where'd you get that guy? Go back to Texas. <laughs> hey, what can I say? I know tomorrow's my last night. I'm leaving anyway. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> you know what, though? Who, I never used to talk like this, really, until my wife insisted, you have to tell women about hijab. You have to. Because they'll listen to you. So you have to do it. I said, I don't want to get into that. It's too, you know. She said, you have to. So I said, okay. And so I did it. I hope it makes her happy. Anyhow, go back to the story. I explained to them that our best women do get married. They do have children. And they have to nurse their children. You know what nursing children is? They go, yes. I said, well, our Quran tells us you nurse the children for two years. Two years, the baby is sucking the milk from the mother. Yet the mother is free to go out and do things. And if she'd like to come here to the masjid and be with us today and listen to this speech, wouldn't it be hard if she had all this hijab on? And sitting there with a baby, now the baby wants to eat, what's she going to do? 
So we built this petition as a courtesy to the women who would like to go back there, remove their hijab, and just hang out, talk, do what they want to do, feed their babies, relax. It's, out, it's Ramadan time. They deserve it as much as anybody. But in the presence of strange men, they wrap up the precious thing which Allah gave them, which is their beauty, their hair, and their neck, and their bodies. They cover it up. So why would I make her wear all of that stuff and she'd like to come here and enjoy Ramadan with us? So we put it there as a courtesy for the ladies. And the ladies who have this shyness and respect for themselves, they go behind it. But if anybody, a lady wants to come out here and sit with you girls, let them come. If this makes them happy, I got no problem with them. I don't. Rasul Sallallahu didn't have a problem with it. If they didn't have taqwa for Allah, he, well, he told you, if you don't fear Allah, do whatever you're big enough to do. Allah will deal with you. But by the way, if she did come out on the other side, I would tell her enough stuff, she'd be shy enough to go back. <laughs> because a woman has rights and, and limits. And a man has rights. And you have rights to look at a woman. As a man, you can look at a woman once. You have that right. You can look once. Is that right? But then Allah said, tell the believing man to look down. One time there was a brother from the Gulf. I don't want to say Saudi Arabia because that'd be wrong, so I won't do it. There was a... <laughs> brother from the Gulf and he was with us you know and we were talking and everything outside and, and a girl a real pretty girl she walked by and he went like this <laughs> and we said Abdullah it's not his real name Abdullah Abdullah what are you doing he said don't bother me I didn't blink we all get one look <laughs> One look. Don't make him blink. <laughs> so these girls are asking me about this petition, this wall, and I'm explaining to them how this is a courtesy. And they said, now we understand. Thank you very much. I said, okay, now it's my turn. Can I ask you a question? They said, okay. I said, you told me that the best of the best of your women have this covering, they can't get married. Who's the best of the best of your men? They said, well, you know, the priests, the cardinals, bishops, popes. I said, that's right. Can they get married? They said, no. I said, why? Are they married to God too? <laughs> they looked at each other and went, we don't know. I said, because if they're married to God too, this is weird. <laughs> That's a real weird thing you got. Can I ask you another question? They said, yeah. If you can't get married, that means you don't have anybody to hold you and make you feel good. You know, when you're depressed, you're sad, or somebody to hold you when you're excited and you want to share some good news. You just want to be close really close to somebody. That's what Allah tells us, to be like wrapped in each other. Wrapped in each other. You can just wrap up in your wife. You can't do that with a guy. I mean, we hug each other, but not like that. But you can do that with your wife. You can just let, like all night long, just hold her and be close. And she can hold you and be close. That's true. It's nice. It's something beautiful. Somebody you care about, and they care about you. And they're always there for you. Even when you have bad breath. <laughs> right? Even when you make a stupid mistake, they're still there for you. Even when you say something that's really like, duh, they're still there for you, right? In fact, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Having somebody that's there for you no matter what happens.
It's your wife, and you're her husband. If you had an accident at work, you lost your arm, she's not going to walk off and say, oh, you don't have an arm, heck with you. She still care about you. If she got hurt in an accident, something happened to her, you still care about her, you take care of her, that's your wife. The mother of your children. Somebody you grow old with. Somebody that right up to the very death, that's your mate. And Allah said that in the Quran, that he created mates from you. Yes. Yes. And you guys are telling me that the best of the best of your people don't have that. They don't have mates. They don't have anybody to be close to. They're alone. And when they get old, who's going to take care of them? And they have no children to look out for them. Who cares about them when they get old? Who goes up to them and says, Dad, how are you doing? Remember when we used to do so and so? Such and such. Hey, Mom, how's it going? How do you feel? I brought your favorite sweets for you. I know what you like. Who cares what those old people like because they don't have any family. And those girls are looking at me like, we don't know. We didn't think about it. We didn't think about it. I said, yeah, well, think about it. Because here's another point. If the best of the best of your people, of your women, of your men, can never get married and never have any children, that means that for 2,000 years, the worst of the worst of you are the ones who are going and having babies and keep on populating this earth until there will be nothing left except the lowest humanity there is. You put a petition in your religion between human beings and common sense, a petition you put between a man and a woman, between life and death, and then you ask me about a petition that we put as a courtesy for the believing women. May Allah guide you. And I got up and walked off and left them. After I did that, I realized that's a very important part of rights and limits in Islam. That's an important part of the haqqa la ilaha illallah. And I felt good. And I didn't feel good about the way I kind of did the end of that, you know. But still, I started telling this story. And I told it over and over for a year. And in Ramadan, I went back there again the next year to Melbourne, Florida. And I told the brothers, well, you guys were eating last year. This is what happened. And I told them the story. There were two girls, 19 years old, who were Catholics, who wanted to know about that petition. They heard the speech. They knew about La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, but the only thing they had was that petition. As I told the story, the brothers were laughing, even at the parts that weren't funny. They kept laughing through the whole story. At the end of it, they were almost falling on the floor. Ha, 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 ha. And when I got done, they said, Sheikh, the two girls came back. They made shahada. They're on the other side of the wall right now. <laughs> Allah Akbar! Alhamdulillah! It's Allah who guides, not me, but that felt good. That felt good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Rights and? And we don't say equality, we say equity. Don't you want what belongs to you? I'm going to ask you one more before I end this one. The Quran tells us at the time of death that a man gets a larger share of inheritance than a woman. Is that fair? Is that equality? No, but it is equity. It's not equality. The woman gets a much smaller share than a man. If there are brothers and sisters, the girls don't get the same amount, true? Why? Because if you want to change it, ladies, just tell us you want to change it, and I'll tell you what will happen. The reason you get less is because you get to keep all of it. A man doesn't get to keep any of it. Remember the ayah I quoted to you earlier in Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 34? It says, Rajulun are responsible for the women. An-Nisa, right? It means all of the money I make I have to take care of my mother. 
my sister, my wife, my daughter, actually my aunts, my cousins, any women that need help, as a Muslim, I have the responsibility, I have to. It's wajib on me to take care of the women. I can't let them stay in the street. Muslim countries don't leave women laying out in the street overnight. Even the poorest Muslim countries I visited don't leave old ladies laying around with a shopping cart and a plastic bag. But they're all over New York. They're all over Washington, D.C., but whenever somebody comes to visit somebody important, they just clean up that area and push all of those people away. They get trucks and guards and go out and get out of here, get out of here, drive them out. You don't know about that, do you? You didn't see that on those pretty pictures on the TV. They don't show you those side, do they? Come on over and take a look at the real United States next time, okay? Look at the ladies out in the street. The old ladies can't even take care of themselves and they lay out there in the street and it's freezing cold at night and they die and they say, well, we got another Jane Doe, cut her up and see what she's all about. Yep. You'd think I'm joking. It's not a joke. But Islam doesn't permit that. Why? Rights and limits. I have the right to make money. I have a limit. I have to spend it. I have the right to be inheriting more than my sister does at the time of death, but then I have to take care of her if she needs anything because she gets to keep her money. You want to change that? And I know they don't. Because when people understand the real Islam, they love it. And the more you know about Islam, the more the Iman increases. And the more you know about Allah, the more the Yaqeen increases until what happens? Until you want the haqqa, la ilaha illallah, and all of the rights and limits that go with it. So let's make dua that Allah will put the real Islam in our lives and in our hearts. I mean, he'll give us the iman and la ilaha illallah. He'll give us the firm yaqeen in the yawmul qiyamah and the yawmul akhir. That he'll give us the yaqeen in the jannah, jannah to firdos. Allah give us this. I mean, ask Allah, Allah give us jannah to firdos. This is the best. We want to be up close to Allah and close to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the best. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan. Wa fil akhirati hasan. Wa qina adab an-nar. Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim.